G'day folks, just a little bit of an update on Blue Rav and uh, I'm also going to post this on Rav4 World because this topic has come up a couple of times about grounding in these cars or at least negative battery to engine connectivity. They seem to be pretty poor, I haven't found a major negative cable going to the engine apart from a very thin one. I could barely be 6mm cable. Um, this is 16 or so by comparison I think. I haven't exactly gauged it, but it's just a um, power cable out of an old uh, variable frequency drive and it's very good stuff. You don't have to use this sort of stuff, of course. You can just go to your car audio install center and just get them to make up a lead like this. They'll have crimps for battery lugs and other stuff. Or your industrial electrical supplier like Middendorf Electrics in Australia. They'll have a tool like this or a hydraulic one on site. They'll also supply you with the lugs, which come in various flavors and sizes. Uh, these ones are all way too big, I'm not putting that many amps through it, but uh, yeah, I was going to use these cables, but again, they are significantly bigger. It's an old mains input block from a VFD, high power drive. Um, again, it's just recycling stuff, you don't have to reuse bits if you're not in that sort of business. I am, so I'm just reusing old scrap, but you can get leads like this made up by the... Uh, car AV install shops or any kind of uh, industrial electrician will probably carry around some heavy um, lug crimps. Um, there's plenty of ways of doing it. Uh, you could even buy the lugs yourself and take a uh, center punch or something like that and stake it in two places to pinch the wire in there. Don't hammer them flat because eventually heat will make them expand a little bit and the cable will just slip straight out again. Uh, that's the worst way of doing it. The other alternative is to solder them. But again, soldering and heat under high current applications means it can desolder itself. Uh, not that that's likely with what it's doing, but if it was, say, on a truck starter motor, I'd have problems with it. And certainly if it was on a welder. You don't solder welding cable lugs because they do get pretty hot, especially if this was to work loose and it'll um, start getting hot around here. The solder will melt and you, your cable comes out and it burn, burns it up. So... Yeah, I'm probably even overkill with this cable, but to me it's borderline. It's fairly solid. But that's one I crimped on last night. I don't have one in the smaller hole, but I'm going to sandwich that under a washer so it's perfect. The other step up was that, and I doubled the cable over. But anyway, I'm also putting other terminal lugs on the battery. That's one of the factory ones. It didn't even go tight enough to uh, grab a hold of the terminal properly. I did mangle it a little bit more getting it off. Sorry, that's a positive one, but I did mangle it a bit more getting it off, but it was so badly stretched, it just wasn't tight. And the new batteries, well, that was the new battery that came with the car, but I think they put it in before they stored it, because I haven't been able to get it to come up and hold charge for any amount of time past a week. So it's pretty much dead. You can see that side, the side of that cell's all blown out, probably from trying to forcibly charge it. Same with that one there. Hydrometers never worked either, so I think they've had it on charge for quite some time and actually cooked it. But either way, I've got a spare battery here which has never failed me. And uh, I think it actually came out a little car, my little backyard Festiva pet. That battery never died. Even after months of sitting, that, cut, that battery still cranked the engine just fine. So, yeah. Let's put this cable in. I'll show you where to route it, or where you could route it. There's a couple of ways. I think this might be a little bit too long, it's 1200 long, but I've found a better way of routing it that might eliminate the need for it to be that long. You could get away with a metre of cable. Okay, so where I'm going with this is taking that stud, sorry, that bolt out. I'm going to sandwich that end under the lug, and I was originally going to run it around here and go under the intake, but that would get it in the way of service work, so I'm actually going to run it around this side of the strut tower under here where there's already a loom going through and just bring it back under the air box. I'll leave the excess length in there so that it's easy enough to work around and it's lifted out of the way. I'm going to aim for one of these bolts, I'm thinking that one because it's a bit smaller. I could drill the lug out and go for the main uh, lifting lug bolt, but I might just put it under where this condenser is. That's going to... I think that goes down to ignition or something. It's just a little um, 0.47 microfarad. Well, it's essentially a capacitor. 
it's a 0.47 microfarad capacitor condenser or suppressor cap um, yeah so basically I'm just going to come down to here you could pick up any particular bolt on the engine but there's another one down there that's an 8 mil but it's right next to that sensor so I'd rather have it up high enough that I can just undo it and get it out of the way if I'm doing service work uh, the cable I'm using is very heat resistant um, so is all this stuff I mean it's that fairly close to the exhaust but it's not going to get hot enough to really affect any uh, electrical cables and you've still got the alternator and everything nearby um, what is that noise? No, I think it's carbon canister venting it does it every now and then that's the positive that I've remade used an old brass clamp I can't tell you where to get these because I bought these as industrial surplus um, but anything similar will work I just knocked the ears off this piece here sandpaper clean it up get rid of any oxidation clamped it on the negative clamp still clean and tight so I might leave that for the time being but I replaced both of them on Betty the little silver RAV4 that I've got and uh, again cranks a lot better and I've got the same cable going down to lug on the block actually I, I went around that way and I might redo it next time I'm doing a service so yeah extra grounding is good for extra current tra um, current transfer you're talking still a few hundred amps momentarily through the starter motor I imagine there is a negative cable going in here somewhere there has to be there has to be a decent negative cable not just that buddy thing that goes from the chassis to the um, lifting lug it can't just be that no way there is one for the starter motor somewhere but where it is I don't know and apparently it's inadequate okay well that's the uh, connection point down there done it just makes it past the battery I can still get the battery clamp in there down there and it just tucks in down under the air box and comes out up here where I'll terminate it. It is pretty long. I could definitely lose some of the cable, but I just can't be bothered using another lug to recrimp it. Um, yeah, very good. So I'll finish that off, connect the battery up, and do a starting test. Even the battery lugs are good clean too. Getting rid of oxide layers and protective film and everything like that is absolutely critical to letting amps flow. Amps are like well a volume of water if there's an obstruction in the way it doesn't flow so you want to get rid of that obstruction in this case the log jam is oxide on the terminals just like a log jam in a river back banks it up causes problems you want to get rid of that that's why putting a bigger cable in it's putting another basically another river in next to the river perfect and that's another little question that I get all the time why don't I get zapped when I touch a car battery? Look, it's fully charged. It could put hundreds of amps out and I can touch the terminals like that and it doesn't do anything because the voltage is not high enough. We're dealing with hundreds of amps, which is the volume, say, speaking about a river. It's the width of the river or the, the amount of water flowing through it. But volts is how fast it's flowing. So if you've got a river that, say, 10 meters wide that's barely moving it's sort of the equivalent of yeah 12 volts at 400 amps but if you've got a river that's that width but flowing really fast it's sort of the equivalent of 400 amps but it's 2000 volts and it'd basically carbonize you or kill you so yeah volts and amps are directly related to each other and also directly related to whether or not you actually get zapped by something. 12 volts just isn't enough to travel through your body. It can't break down the internal resistance. Uh, say if it was 75 volts you'd get a nasty shock. 150 volts you're getting really bad. 240 volts at 400 amps would create a horrible mess. It'd be instant death. Uh, even at lower amps, you'd, at that voltage you only need a few milliamps. I think it's like 30 milliamps or something like that. Um, yeah, okay. I'm rambling even more, but you're going to get a good video out of it. <laughs> and it's getting dark. So let's finish this off and do a start test. 
Oh, let's see if this battery's kept well from not being used for a while. I did give it a charge, but it should be just fine. I think I only run it down dead once, so it should be okay. Everything's reset again. That's better. <laughs> Some noisy belts and things in there, so she makes some funny noises. Not too bad though. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, very good. I don't know why I said she, it should be he. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and uh, hope you learned something. <laughs>